Milan Fashion Week picked up where London left off last Wednesday, at least weather-wise. Just like in the last days of the British capital's fashion bonanza, torrential rain with brief sunny spells marked much of the five-day event, bringing delays to many of the presentations and, in a few cases, most notably, the Gucci show forcing organizers to move their venues. But the downpours didn't dampen the week's mood, which was buzzy with expectation for several debuts, including Sabato de Sarno as new creative director of Gucci and Tom Ford's first Milan show under British designer Peter Hawkins, Ford's longtime protégé. Both hit their strides with highly well-received collections, as did a number of other familiar faces to Italy's fashion capital. From Prada to Ferragamo, Fendi to Bottega Veneta, Milan proved once again that impeccable elegance is its watchword, and crisp femininity which this season took the shape of knits, short shorts, red leather, and well-tailored jackets its main aesthetic. Not every brand shared that same vision, namely Diesel, the week's Enfant Terrible, which, in pure Diesel style, put out a larger-than-life collection of distressed garments made of shredded deadstock jeans, recycled denim and vintage posters transformed into crumpled graphics, giving the audience true postmodern punk vibes in a rave setting and the wildest presentation of the season. Overall, however, the festivities showed a consistency of form that continues to make the Italian city Paris's greatest rival to the fashion scene throne. As per usual, movie stars and A-listers flocked to the proceedings, gracing front rows like it was their full-time job, given the strikes currently taking place in Hollywood, it might as well be. Gucci had the starriest attendance of them all, with Julia Roberts, Ryan Gosling, Gabrielle Union, Jessica Chastain, Paul Mescal, and Jodie Comer as just some of its VIP guests. Emma Watson, Scarlett Johansson, and Benedict Cumberbatch came out to support Prada, while Kate Moss, Linda Evangelista and Naomi Campbell sat together at Fendi. The list could go on. Read on for our main Milanese takeaways. Everything old is new again. Anna Wintour might once have said that fashion is not about looking back but looking forward, in the 2009 documentary The September Issue, but several brands in Milan turned to the past and their archives for their spring-summer 2024 collections. Kim Jones did it first at Fendi, which opened the week with a lineup of streamlined, beautifully tailored clothes that took a cue from the label's spring-summer 1999 collection, designed by Karl Lagerfeld, though the creative also cited the classical statues of Rome as inspiration. Prada referenced the 1920s flapper girl with dropped waist dresses featuring swaying lashings of fringe, then hinted at the 40s and 80s with a series of menswear silhouettes that spanned oversized barn coats, gray and navy suits, and romper shorts. There were also traces of the 60s and 90s, the best example being a sleeveless shift dress made from organza and gazer, a type of silk, that seemed to float behind the models as they walked down the runway. At Tom Ford, new designer Peter Hawkins paid homage to some of its predecessors' greatest hits from the Gucci spring-summer 1996 show Skinny Velvet Suits, unbuttoned silk blouses and tiny shorts paired with towering stilettos albeit with a slightly demure approach. Versace dipped into its spring-summer 1995 Atelier Versace archives to revisit its iconic hourglass jackets, checkerboard styles and sharp mini-dresses in Georgette and Jersey and added a touch of 1960s-infused aesthetic with sorbet colors and silhouettes that could have easily been worn by Bridget Bardot or Priscilla Presley back then. More 90s nostalgia was seen at Todd's and Philosophy di Lorenzo Serafini, while Max Mara designer Ian Griffiths drew from Britain's Land Army, an all-female workforce created in 1939 to oversee the country's farms while men were at war, to offer a series of utilitarian pieces that included apron-style dresses, boiler suits, jodhpur pants, and parachute-strapped corsets. The brand that took the crown for projecting the past into next season, however, was Machino, currently in between designers. To mark its 40th anniversary, the house-assed stylists Carline Cerf de Dudzeel, Katie Grand, Lucia Liu and Gabriella Carifa Johnson to rethink some of Franco Machino's designs from 1983 to 1993 and create 10 looks each the resulting collection was a fun mix of styles. From Surf de Dudzeel's paired back silhouettes, a tribute to Machino's most timeless classics, to Carifa Johnson's statement jewelry and crochet dresses, Lucia Liu's overly romantic and very fluffy gowns, and Grand's Loud. Luxury presentation, which featured black and white bodysuits painted with body parts and was modeled by elite dancers or comebacks and newcomers.